after planting eight successful churches in London, Bradford, Manchester, Birmingham, Cardiff, Nottingham and Sheffield in the United Kingdom and in Lusaka, Zambia, we invite you to El Shaddai Houston. Come and be a part of a charismatic, global and faith-filled revolution that is set to make a mark in your life that can never be erased. We meet as a church on Sundays at 10.30 a.m. and Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. at 5633 Richmond Avenue, Houston, Texas, 77057. For more information, call us on 713-780-0600. Email houston at elshadaitoday.com or log on to our website at www.elshadaitoday.com. Come and discover your destiny and enter into the realm of possibility. Hello and welcome to Get Understanding. I'm glad you could join us again for today's broadcast. Today we are continuing the series that we've been doing concerning the blessing of Abraham and specifically looking at the circle of God's blessing. You know, not everybody stands in the same circle because with the blessing, you are surrounded literally by a force field of glory and the power of God is manifested and the goodness of God, unexpected things begin to take place because of that blessing which makes rich. And the scripture says, God adds no sorrow within. So as we get into the word today, let your faith be stirred up as you reach for the very best that God has for you because you and I stand in the circle of God's blessing and I look forward to seeing you after the broadcast. The most powerful thing God can do for you if you fear him is to teach you, underline the word teach, to teach you how to choose. Most of us, if we are honest, will concede the fact that we are where we are because nobody taught us how to choose. And the trouble is, most of us, we have got so much confidence that we think we know everything. Let, let me give you an, a, a, an illustration. Some of you parents of teenagers, and, and the teenager comes in and says, Oh, do you trust me? You feel under pressure. No, you, the, you don't have to feel under pressure. The answer to that question is a flat out no. <laughs> I don't trust you. Not because you are a bad person, no. but because trust is earned. Yeah. Yeah, right. And the more good choices you make, the more and more trust you. So you shouldn't be asking me whether or not I trust you. You should be doing things that earn my trust. Yeah. Boy, I'm preaching better than you. I am any. But somebody got to teach us how to choose. How to choose a career. How to choose your dress code. How to choose the way you present yourself. No, I'm not talking about having a one style. No, no, you ain't got to wear a suit all the time. You can't try to be a music mogul looking like me. Nobody is going to hire you. You have to understand the protocol of your industry. Teach you how to choose what career you're going to want. Because it might seem exciting right now to be, you know, go to university and take women's studies. Thank God for women now. But then imagine 20 years down the line when you got five mouths to feed with a degree in women's studies. Who's going to be paying you enough for you to feed those little mouths and, and they are programmed to eat everything in the house? <laughs> but nobody chose, taught you how to choose. But he said, if you fear the Lord, he will teach you how to choose. Right. Don't buy that house. Don't go over there. Don't mix with them. Don't listen to them. They are trying to act right, but it's not right. Don't, don't, don't do this because that will be the end of that. And, and God teaches you how to choose. But now notice what will happen because of that. Verse 13, he himself shall dwell in prosperity. Well, there we go again. Look, I didn't write this. He said it, and I believe it. He shall dwell in prosperity. And his descendants shall inherit the earth. 
that, that right there for your kids. The whole earth belongs to your sons Amen. and your daughters. Amen. Hallelujah. And the secret of the Lord is with those who fear him. And I'm going to leave this alone. And he will show them. He will demonstrate his covenant. He's going to make the word become flesh in their life because they got revelation knowledge. They got the secret of the Lord. But I, I want to focus on verse 13 and, 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 and uh, check this out. He shall dwell in prosperity. That, one translation, Tyndale's Living Translation says, he shall dwell in the circle of God's blessing. So he said, when you fear the Lord and he teaches you how to choose, notice you will be standing in the circle of God's blessing. There is such a thing as the circle of God's blessing. Yes, everybody might be in this room, but we are not, not all of us are standing in the circle of recession. You're going to see where we're going. We're not all standing in the circle of defeat. Yeah, we might have challenges, but, but ultimately I'm standing, you're standing in the circle of God's blessing. Amen. Now, what you got to do is understand what that means. If what we saw last week about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Joseph is the product of standing in the circle, then I submit to you that in the same circle that they stood in, if he is not just the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but is the God of Ramson Mumba, I have the same blood bought right to expect what they saw in their lives in my lifetime. Because it's in the same circle. Can you say amen? amen? Now, now, look at this. You will stand in the circle of God's blessing. Now, let's talk about a circle. Why, why, why talk about a circle? Because, because by definition, a circle is an exclusion zone. It's like they tell you. If you get into this particular zone, you are now liable for the congestion charge in London. If you stay out of that circle, you don't pay for driving into certain in, in, in London. But once you drive past the letter C, you are now in the zone where the congestion charge applies. But if you are not in that particular area, you avoid that. It's the same thing. There is a boundary line. Go to Psalm 16. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I'm in the circle of God's blessing. You begin to see yourself like this, you're going to be fearless to expect God to move on your life. Psalm 16. This is awesome. Verse 5, O oh Lord, you are my portion, the portion of my inheritance and my cup, and you maintain my lot. Check this out. He maintains your lot. That means nobody can steal your lot. I'm scared he's going to take my man. He can't take your man. She, and if he takes your man, that's a bigger trouble. If she takes your man, that's worse. Okay, we'll leave that alone. Some of you didn't even get that out. Your neighbor will tell you later, okay. I'm scared, I'm scared, you know, he's going to take my, my woman. They can't take her. He maintains your lot. Amen. They're going to take my job. They can't take your job. They're going to take my money. They can't take your money. They're going to take my stuff. They can't take your stuff because God will see to it that he maintains your lot. Hallelujah. Before anybody can steal your stuff, God's going to say, you can't touch that. So everything that's been taken from you just means it went yours. Everybody that can leave you just means they weren't supposed to be around because God will maintain your Lord. Now check this out, the concept of blessing, boundaries. He says the lines 
Oh, Suki Suki now. Nah. We're talking about something else now. They have fallen unto me in broken places. Can you read? We'll read it later again. The lines. Come on. Go like this. The lines. Come on, touch yourself, your big self, little self, whatever you are. The lines have fallen unto me in pleasant places. Glory to God. The lines have fallen unto us in pleasant places and we have a good inheritance. Notice there's a circle where everything around you is destined to become pleasant. It may be painful right now, but in the final analysis, the lines have already fallen unto you in pleasant places, and you have a good inheritance. Understanding this, that's why David in Psalm 27 said, I would have fainted. I would have lost my mind. Unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord. In the land of the living. No, you're not going to die before you see this. You will see it before you check out of here. Because the lines have fallen unto me in pleasant places. And I have a good inheritance. Now, there it is again. Notice God has marked boundary lines for you. Go to Zechariah chapter 2. Here, here is the place I came to. If God can't do it, it can't be done. I mean, so, so why, 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 why stay up all night trying to help him be God? I mean, this is serious. If God can't do it, then who can do it? Who do I think I am to think that if Jehovah can't get it done, I can do it by my strength? So the Bible says, you know, cast your cares upon him. So you just roll the care and you, there you are, Jesus. You remember Wednesday night? Put it in the hands of Jesus. Okay, 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 okay. And it will take your not enough into more than enough. After planting eight successful churches in London, Bradford, Manchester, Birmingham, Cardiff, Nottingham, and Sheffield in the United Kingdom, and in Lusaka, Zambia, we invite you to El Shaddai Houston. Come and be a part of a charismatic, global and faith-filled revolution that is set to make a mark in your life that can never be erased. We meet as a church on Sundays at 10.30 a.m. and Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. at 5633 Richmond Avenue, Houston, Texas, 77057. For more information, call us on 713-780-0600. Email houston at elshadaitoday.com. Or log on to our website at www.elshadaitoday.com. Come and discover your destiny and enter into the realm of possibility. Now you're in Zechariah chapter 2 and verse 5. Look at this. For I, says the Lord, will be a war of fire all around you. Glory to God. This is awesome. This is, tell your neighbor, you can't touch this. You might be burned. You see, that's why, that's why people try to take you down, but they go down. They try to take you down, but they're going down because there's a war of fire. Oh, boy, I must. There's a war of fire. Listen, listen to your enemies. is a consuming fire, but it's the glory in the midst of you. Okay, 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 okay. He's a war of fire round about you, but it's manifested goodness in your midst. There it is again, surrounded by a circle that the devil can't penetrate. Ladies and gentlemen, we are saved. Anybody remember Proverbs 24, uh, the, the, the 18 rather? The name of the Lord is a strong tower. And the righteous what? Run into it and they are what? The righteous do what? Run into it and they are what? You know what the, what the picture is of, of that scripture? It's like, for example, uh, when I'm in Houston, of course, being a British citizen, even though I'm in the United States, 
if I committed the crime, which I'm not, <laughs> thank God, that's a good thing to say. If I committed a crime, and the law enforcement officers in Houston or whatever in the United States or whatever country I was in, they started pursuing me to apprehend me so they can try me. If I ran to the British Embassy, even though I am in the United States, they cannot arrest me without permission from the Crown. Because even though I am in the United States and the British Embassy is on American soil, it is still sovereign territory if I can run into it. You may be in the world and the world might have a recession, but in the world there still is the kingdom of God and if you can run into the kingdom, you have immunity from the laws of that land because the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Somebody go and say this. So there it is again. There is a, there's a safe place where you can hide. He's a wall of fire round about you. And the glory, I'm going to leave that alone. You know, glory is, is not just smoke coming out of my afro. <laughs> glory, glory is, is manifested goodness. You remember he told, he, told, he told Moses, Moses got tired of working for somebody he never saw. So right out of context, he says, they are talking about something completely different. He says, show me your glory. And God says, I'm going to hide you in the cleft of a rock, and you're going to see my backside, my back parts, not backside. Somebody say, God got backside? No, okay. <laughs> you're going to see my hinder part. I'm going to leave that alone. And the Bible says, he hid him in that place, and Moses asking for the glory to see the glory. God answered him and said, I'm going to let my goodness pass you by. So the glory of God is the manifested goodness of God. So when he says, I'm going to be a fire around you, I'm going to terrorize your enemies. Those that bless you, I will bless them. Those that curse you, I will curse them. If your enemies come against you in one direction, I'll cause them to flee from you in seven directions. But when you are in the house, in the circle, I'm going to be manifested goodness. Go to Psalm 34. Let's check this out. Look at this. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear them, who fear him, and he delivers them. Somebody says, Whoa, I'm surrounded by enemies. They are not the first circle. Don't get confused. Your haters are not the first circle that surrounds you. There's the angel of the Lord, and he's literally talking about Jesus. <laughs> I'll leave that alone. He surrounds you. All around you. There's no area that is left exposed where the enemy can break in. No, he surrounds you and he's all around you. And notice his job to deliver you. Hallelujah. He's going to deliver you from any challenge in life because he surrounds you. Somebody shout, I'm surrounded, I'm surrounded. by the angel Amen. of the Lord. Amen. Chapter 32, come on, let's look at this. Oh, this is good. Verse 7 again. You are my hiding place. Check this out. I just feel like I need to hide. It's okay this morning. Let me show you your safe haven. Anybody ever been in a season of life where sometimes you just feel like David said in Psalm 55, I wish I was like a bird with wings. So at least sometimes I could just fly away. Check out for a while and then come back later. 
Okay, let, let, let's look at this. The, 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 the rest of you will, 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 will cast out lying devils. Let me try again. He said, uh, if you've never ever been to the place where you wanted to hide, you haven't lived long enough. Thank you for your enthusiasm. You are my hiding place and you shall preserve me from trouble. How? Because you shall surround me with songs of deliverance. <laughs> now, now it's not just a wall, but it's singing around that wall. Okay, 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 okay. He's not only a wall and lines that have fallen in pleasant places, but now he's singing songs of deliverance. Every time you tune into frequency, FM Holy Ghost. FM Holy Ghost and he's been singing that you're coming out because I surround you with songs of deliverance. I'm surrounded with songs of deliverance. I'm going to say it again until it gets in. I'm surrounded with songs of deliverance. So don't get confused now. Don't, don't see your enemies first. Don't see the trouble first. See that war of fire. Satan, if you put your little finger in there, you're going to be burned around here. You, you try to come in and, 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 and no weapon formed against me shall prosper because there's a war of fire round about me. I'm in the circle of God's blessing. So, so, tell your enemies, you want to dance? You better show up with a fire extinguisher first. Because <laughs> we're going to barbecue you. You, you're about to be, I, I got the sauce, Jehovah got the fire, and we're going to BBQ you. Okay, okay, okay. Let me show you what, what is sad. Job chapter 1, to your left, from the book of Psalms. Job 1, and, uh, you know, J-O-B. <laughs> and the Lord said to Satan, verse 7, from where have you come from? So Satan answered and said, from going to and from the earth. The dude can't get no rest. He has to go back and forth. He's a tired devil. <laughs> Somebody, the devil tired. Can you imagine for the last 6,000 years, he go back and forth. He in Alaska, he find nobody to devour, he goes to Australia. He find nobody to devour, he goes to Tanganyika, Tanzania. He find nobody there, he goes to the Samoa Island. He got to find, he's a tired devil. I feel sorry for Diabolos. His mama should have taught him to sit down. <laughs> but now look at this, going to and from the earth, uh, uh, walking back and forth in it. Then the Lord said, have you considered my servant Job that there is none like him in all the earth, a blameless man, upright, one who fears the Lord and he shuns evil. So Satan answered unto him, does Job fear you for nothing? Now check this out, check this out, because we're talking about the circle of God's blessing. But, but Job... In verse 5, so it was when the days of feasting had run their course that Job would send and sanctify the children and, and would rise up early in the morning offering burnt sacrifices, wondering, you know, maybe my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Job is living in fear, but, 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 but look, at, look at what Satan says. He says, uh, he doesn't fear you for nothing in verse 9. Uh, 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 what, what, what is it that he, he fears you for? What, what is it that, that, that makes Job the man he is? Verse 10, have you not put a hedge around him and around his house and, of, and around everything that he has on every side? Oh, suke, suke, now look at this. Satan says, I've been wanting to take this man down for a long time. But I cannot take him down in spite of my best attempts. Because every time I show up to take him down, I bump into the hedge. 
I'm so glad you could join us for today's broadcast. I believe that the word that God has given us to preach does make a difference in your life. But today we want to ask you to pray about becoming a vision partner with our ministry, helping us take the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ to the ends of the earth. You know, the scripture says that the Lord gave the word, but great was the company of those that published it. And as you help spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Bible talks about receiving the prophet's reward. That means for every life that is changed, every life that is delivered, every life that is made whole, all the restoration that takes place as a result of these broadcasts, God will credit it to your heavenly account. And so if you would like to become a partner with us, please call us or email us. Go to our website and make a donation so that we can continue to preach the gospel and make a mark on our generation that can never be erased. And so until next time, this is Ramson Mumba reminding you that wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, you get wisdom and in all of your getting, get understanding. God bless you. After planting eight successful churches in London, Bradford, Manchester, Birmingham, Cardiff, Nottingham and Sheffield in the United Kingdom and in Lusaka, Zambia, we invite you to El Shaddai Houston. Come and be a part of a charismatic, global and faith-filled revolution that is set to make a mark in your life that can never be erased. We meet as a church on Sundays at 10.30am and Wednesdays at 7.30pm at 5633 Richmond Avenue, Houston, Texas, 77057. For more information, call us on 713-780-0600. Email houston at elshadaitoday.com or log on to our website at www.elshadaitoday.com. Come and discover your destiny and enter into the realm of possibility. Thank you for watching Get Understanding. For information about our ministries or to download our free podcasts, visit us at www.elshadaitoday.com.